everybody. Uh, right now we are going to talk about section 7.5, uh, which is using the Laplace transform to solve an initial value problem. And so this is the first section that I've done a video for um, that's actually covering new material. So the way that this is going to work is that I'll, you know, go through the material like I would have in class before, you know, the events of the last couple of weeks. And then watch this video before class and on Tuesday we will um, just sort of have a Zoom meeting and you can ask me any questions um, that you might have. So while you're watching this video, um, you can take notes, you can follow along in the book. I'm basically just copying what's in the book. Um, I would encourage you to go through the other examples in the book that I haven't uh, been covering and any questions that you have, write them down and you can ask me, um, you can ask me on the Canvas discussions or you can, and or you can ask me in uh, class on Tuesday and I can go through some more examples and clear up anything that wasn't clear in this video. So uh, what we're going to do to solve an initial value problem is um, basically use the, trans the Laplace transform to solve the problem in our S universe. So I'm just going to start off right, right away with an example. So example one, we want to solve the initial value problem, problem, y double prime minus 2y prime plus 5y equals negative 8 times e to the negative t. And then we have our initial conditions, y of 0 equals 2, and y prime of 0 equals 12. So now a good review practice problem would be for you to think back to about six years ago when we learned how to solve problems like this in chapter 4. And we would um, solve for our uh, our uh, general solution to the problem, and we'd find our um, homogeneous solutions and our particular solution, and blah 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 blah. Um, really, trying to go and solve this problem right now. Pause the video, go back, and figure out how you would do this using the techniques of Chapter Four would be excellent review. Hopefully, we'll get the same answer doing it this way. Um, but that's not what we're going to do this time. Uh, right now, we're going to think about the fact that um, y is a function of t. And so what we have in this, inequal or this equality here is an equality on functions of t. So we could just take the Laplace transform uh, of both sides, and then we'll have a, an equality of functions of s. So we're going to take the Laplace transform of both sides. Uh, so that's kind of our step one. And so then we get L of y double prime minus 2y prime plus 5y equals L of negative 8 e to the negative t. Now we can use our linearity property to break up the terms on the left-hand side. So that gives us L of y double prime minus 2 L of y prime plus 5 L of y equals, and we can use the table. I'm not going to pull it in the table right now. You can just look it up yourself. Um, negative 8 over s plus 1. Okay, so now what we have um, is still the Laplace transform of a bunch of derivatives. And if we recall back to the properties of the Laplace transform, one of our properties was that derivatives in the t-universe 
turn into polynomials in the S universe. So that's what we want to do here. We want to turn the derivatives inside the braces into polynomials. So what we're going to do just notation wise is we're going to let capital Y of S equal the Laplace transform of Y. And now let me make some more space and bring in our table of properties to refer to. There we go. Now we can use the derivative properties here to write our Laplace transforms of y and y of y prime and y double prime in terms of our capital Y. So then we have that the Laplace transform of y prime equals, using the table over on the right, equals s times capital Y of s minus y of 0. And if we refer back to the problem, the way that I originally wrote it, um, I gave you the initial condition, so that's s capital Y of s minus 2. And then same thing, L of Y double prime, again referring to the table, equals s squared capital Y minus s y of 0 minus y prime of 0, which equals s squared capital Y minus 2s minus 12. So now I can take these and plug them in up here. And I will get the equality. We've got s squared times capital Y, I'll drop the of s now for simplicity, minus 2s minus 12, minus 2s capital Y minus 2, plus 5 capital Y equals negative 8 over s plus 1. Now, what we want to do here Remember, we're trying to solve for lowercase y. And of course, there's no lowercase y in what we've got right here. So we're going to solve for capital Y in our S universe, and then do the inverse Laplace transform, which will give us lowercase y in the T universe. So now all we have to do is figure out what capital Y is. Um, and so let's get all the stuff with y is in it on the left-hand side and everything else on the right-hand side. And that will leave us with s squared minus 2s plus 5 times capital Y equals, now everything over on the right-hand side, we'll get a 2s plus 12 minus 4 minus 8 over s plus 1. So now let's keep simplifying the right-hand side and get everything into a single fraction. Uh, so then we can write this like 2s plus 8 times s plus 1 minus 8 all over s plus 1, uh, where I just sort of multiplied everything that wasn't already in a fraction by s plus 1. And then if we simplify that, we'll get 2s squared uh, plus 10s. Um, and then we have a plus 8 and a minus 8. Uh, all over s plus 1. So now let's give ourselves a little bit more room and we can see that we can just uh, divide the 
term in front of the y away, and that's going to give us that capital Y of S equals uh, 2S squared plus 10S all over S plus 1 times S squared minus 2S plus 5. And so we see that we have this rational function, just like all the examples that we saw in the last section. And in fact, this is exactly um, the problem that we saw in example seven of section 7.4, and that's on page 373. And without going through all the work, I'm going to rewrite this as the um, partial fraction expansion. So this one's a little bit funky because there's a quadratic. And uh, I haven't done with you an example of quadratic, but there's plenty in the book. In fact, you can go read through the details of this example. Um, and so the partial fraction expansion of this is 3 times s minus 1 plus 2 times 4 over s minus 1 squared plus 2 squared minus 1 over s plus 1. So why is that quadratic denominator so weird looking? Um, that's, well, we're going to see in a minute why it comes in handy, but this exactly equals s squared minus 2s plus 5, right? Um, but it's a little bit simpler if it looks like something squared plus something squared. And so you just sort of figure out um, from the s terms what that would have to look like. So it's like half of the coefficient there. So s minus 1 squared. And if you multiply that out, figure out what you're missing. So that gives you an s squared minus 2s uh, plus 1. And so in order to get to the plus 5, you have to add uh, plus 4. And then you just take the square root of that to figure out what it looks like up there. Um, again, this is like high school algebra, but it's maybe, you know, towards the end of the year of your senior year, and maybe you weren't paying attention. But it's not that, not, not that hard. It's just some sort of standard tricks. Anyway, now that we've got this, we just need to take the inverse Laplace transform. So let's bring that up here, and let's bring in our table of Laplace transforms. There we go. Stick that over there. And so now we see that everything, um, the reason that we wrote our um, terms the way that we did right here is because now it looks just like uh, what we've got over here. So this is going to let us do our Laplace transform, or our inverse Laplace transform, pretty easily. Okay. So now what are we looking for? y of t, little y of t, equals the inverse Laplace transform of big Y of s. Okay, so now we can break up the uh, terms of big Y of S. And so I'm going to break this into three different things. First, I'm going to pull the 3 out, take inverse Laplace of S minus 1 over S minus 1 squared plus 2 squared, plus 4 times the inverse Laplace of 2 over s minus 1 squared plus 2 squared, close brace, minus inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1. Okay, And so why did I break it up like that? Because um, this first one looks exactly like this over here with a equals 1 and b equals 2. 
The second one looks exactly like this with b equals 2 and a equals 1. Same thing. And then the third one is pretty easy. That's with a equals negative 1. And so now I can just sort of read off the table. And again, all the details on this are in the, ex in the example in section uh, 7.4. So you can go read through that and work out the sort of algebra arithmetic for yourself. Um, that's going to make more sense than if I try to do it in even more detail here. Okay, so now let's think about our red term. Um, now what we're going to write down is what's in the uh, left-hand side of our table. So we've got 3 times e to the at is just going to be t since a equals 1 times cosine of 2t. So now our answer has got t's in it and the s's are gone. Plus 4 times e to the t times sine of 2t plus now our a equals negative 1, so we've got e to the negative t. And so that is our answer, y of t equals this, okay? And so you can uh, do two things to sort of do a little bit more thinking about this problem. So um, let's see, uh, let's see, thought experiments. Uh, one, I would suggest you um, verify this is a solution to the original problem. And then two, um, you can solve the ODE, the chapter four way. and make sure you get the same answer. And then you can think about whether you like um, this way or the chapter four way uh, better. Um, so I'm gonna end the video now. I'm gonna do another example from this section in the next video. Um, and in that next example, you'll see um, a little bit more of the utility of doing problems this way.